Welcome back to another GB Guns. This is my fancy rifle build. The upper here is what you saw in my piece on what makes POF so special. That's Patriot Ordnance Factory, you single guys um, and gals. Patriot Ordnance Factory handguard with their heat sink barrel nut, one of their barrels with the dictator gas block, which I've adjusted just enough to make the gun cycle on 62 grain uh, M855 ball. So hopefully it'll run on the rest of the stuff. It's mated to a bootleg ink upper receiver. We've got a Patriot Ordnance Factory Tomahawk charging handle and the Sharps Rifle Company bolt carrier, V7 weapons, nice titanium, flat, beautiful dust cover, just for aesthetics. American Defense Manufacturing lower with a hyperfire trigger in it, hope grip, uh, primary weapon systems, buffer tube, and their brilliant ratcheting uh, lock system. Simple Blackhawk buttstock, and uh, we've got it zeroed. That's about all the break in this barrel's been given. Want to find out how it's going to group? So we've got five different loads. We're going to start off crazy light at 35 grain nozzler. This is a, a boat tail lead free round. The barrel is one and eight twist. This is probably too light for it, but we'll see how it does. Then stepping it up to 5.56, because it is a 5.56 barrel, is some Gecko NATO load. This is just your standard 5.56 NATO 55 grain load. We've got another Nosler. This is the Varmageddon 62 grain um, hollow point. From there, another 5.56 load. This is Hornady Black. Probably doesn't come out well on the camera because it's just black. Uh, 62 grain full metal jacket. Then uh, the classic Federal Gold Medal Match, uh, 69 grain Sierra Match King. And last, our heaviest load is from Fioki. It's their 77 grain, and this is also a Sierra Match King hollow point boat tail. Since it's just me shooting today, I'm gonna do a group of five. The pause between iterations is gonna be solely from reloading. Um, no barrel cool or anything like that. Might have noticed in the intro that I am devoid of a muzzle device. Not sure what I'm gonna put on there yet. Uh, also, when adjusting the gas system, which you'll see in a bit here, uh, wanted to see how I could minimize recoil with the gas system with no muzzle device impacting that. So I came out with a naked muzzle. The barrel does have a nice target crown on it though, which is pretty cool. That also makes for a bit of muzzle flash when shooting. You don't realize just how much those A2 flash hiders do until you shoot a bare muzzle. Anyways, let's get to it. I went with an adjustable gas block despite not having a 5.56 can. Why you might ask? Well, I wanted to cut back on gas, not for gas in the face, but to try to minimize recoil and make the smoothest shooting 5.56 that I could without messing around with the buffers and springs back here. So we tuned this thing all the way down to the point where the bolt didn't open after each shot. It was actually pretty amazing. Open it up to run 62 grain, then down a little bit, kind of bounce back around. To show you how successful this has been for us, I've got some 62 grain green tip here and five rounds loaded. I'm gonna shoot two rounds, actually holding the rifle with no muzzle device so you can see what kind of recoil. And the other three rounds, I'm gonna shoot holding it one armed to see if you can tell recoil there versus recoil management from proper stance. So we'll start off with a stance hold, two rounds. Now I will do a one arm hold to see what kind of recoil we get. See, it's pretty smooth. I mean, we know that 223556 is smooth. Those were 556 loads, so yes, they are a little hotter than 223, but uh, once a break is on this thing, it is going to be super smooth.
here's our accuracy results. I uh, had some interesting changes in point of impact. Sorry for the background noise, this is a range. Uh, starting off with our Nosler 35 grain, right here. Um, point of aim was here, point of impact was about an inch and a half or so low, which is to be expected when you zero for 62 grain and you shoot 35 grain. I am impressed that this one and eight twist still stabilized. Of course it is great ammo, but uh, a lot of folks would tell you that this ammo is too light for the one and eight twist. We still had everything within two square inches. Uh, I'd say that's probably an inch and a half or so. Keep in mind also that the break-in for this barrel was us zeroing. That's it. Second, our 5.56 NATO load is here. Um, these three are really nice and tight. These two off to the side, I'd say that's probably shooter error, but for standard military ammo, this is why I've always been a fan of Gecko, is uh, it's relatively affordable for what you get. It's packaged and marketed as if it's just plain Jane ammo, but it's made to uh, superior standards. At least in my book, that's how you get that kind of manufacturing. Our third load, the 62 grain Varmageddon from Nosler, was aiming here and hit quite a bit high. We got one, two, say three and a half inches or so high. I know for sure it's those four clean ones. It's probably that fifth one there. So that's uh, not too bad at all for 62 grain and for varmint load. This is a uh, FB hollow point. Not sure what the FB stands for. Excuse my ignorance. Fourth load, a horny black 556, 62 grain. I was aiming here and hit one, two, three, four, five inches low, surprisingly. But once again, we're looking at about two inches wide at the worst spot. And this is common over-the-counter ammo. Nothing magical to be expected of it, but certainly some pretty darn good results from this POF barrel. Then load number four, I was aiming here and hit back up top with uh, the Federal Premium Gold Medal Match, 69 grain Sierra Match King. And you can see we've got a nice line there with one tossed. I would blame me before the gun or the ammo for that. Looks like this bullet weight was a good fit for this gun. And of course we all know that the gold medal match is good ammo. So that's a really good shot there. Group, rather. This is also a 16 inch barrel, keep in mind. Last load was aiming down here. And once again hit, this time six, maybe seven inches high with the Fioka, Fioka Sierra Match King 77 grain. But it's still within two square inches. I'd say probably about an inch and a half group. Uh, Plenty fine. I know I've just said it, but I'm going to say it again, folks. This is a 16 inch barrel. This is a fighting barrel meant to be a fighting gun, not a bench gun. I've seen groups like this out of guns with longer barrels that claim to be target grade. I gotta say, uh, Patriot Ordnance Factory has done one heck of a job with this upper setup. So one of the things that you saw in the build video on this is that Patriot Ordnance Factory has this giant aluminum heat sink for a barrel nut. And after all the shooting we've just done, that's right, I was grabbing right here, not hot at all. I don't have one of those cool laser temperature gauges, but I can tell you out here the handguard has a little bit of heat. The barrel, well, still has a little bit of an aura of heat that I can see. You might not be able to see it with the camera, but right here is cool to the touch. I mean, you can put my tongue on it. It doesn't hurt. Um, incredibly effective barrel nut system.